What's up, good people? My name is AJ, and you are watching Straight Talks. There are certain personality traits that a person could possess that are going to help them succeed in the finance industry, and those traits will differ depending on the type of role within the industry that that person is serving in. So if you are working in a analytical role where you're doing a lot of modeling or valuation, of course, some more analytical personality types are going to be beneficial to you. And if you're in a wealth management role or anything that's a little more retail oriented, which in the finance industry means regular people oriented, then of course, personality traits that have to do with communicating or being likable are going to be beneficial there. In this video, I'm going to go through several traits that I think help in both industries and most importantly, highlight the one or two things that I think are the most important, no matter which sub industry within finance you are working in. The number one idea that anyone watching this video can take away from it is that the best personality trait someone could have to make them more successful is kindness or respect for others. And that theme isn't exclusive to the finance industry. That's going to apply to almost every professional industry out there or blue collar industry out there. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Everyone will like to work with you a little bit more and you'll be a little bit more likely to be promoted throughout the course of any career if you're kind, if you're a good person. And I realize that it's not always easy to be kind to people in every situation. Sometimes you have to put your pride aside or apologize for things that weren't actually ever your fault or just ignore any other relatively negative emotions that might prevent you from remaining respectful to the person that you're interacting with. This could mean being kind to your coworkers and being a good person to them, or if you're in a management type role, you can listen to any of the most popular or top speakers that speak to managing people and dealing with people's emotions and getting people to work most efficiently and effectively for you. Most of what they talk about is things like uh, putting people in a position where they're working towards something they want to be doing, asking them how you can help them as their manager so that they can do their job better giving them a great working environment, and all those things are really gonna stem from you being a kind person to the people that you're working with. Now, if you are in one of those strictly analytical roles that I talked about earlier, anything that has to do with modeling or valuation, I'll kind of lump them all into those couple categories. It will help if you're a little more interested in crunching numbers and you can probably also get away with being a little bit less friendly. But make no mistake, if you're a jerk to everyone around you in the workplace, you're not gonna get far. I think a lot of finance movies depict a character where they are really hard-nosed and they wanna get a lot of work done and they wanna make a lot of production and they're a jerk to everyone, they yell a lot, they cuss a lot, they don't respect other people, but they're the most successful person in their office or their company or whatever, so other people still look up to them and they're able to just grind their way through a successful career by like stepping on people's toes all the way up the ladder. I'm sure there is some of this that happens out there in the finance industry. I know that there is some of that that happens in the finance industry, but my point is that if you're using that mentality, you're not gonna go as far as you would have been able to go otherwise if you were kind to everyone who's either supporting you or managing you or you know peers right next to your sides doing the same jobs as you. Everything's gonna be a better scenario if you are a good person. But I know I'm kind of ranting about that topic now again. So in an analytical role, you can look at things like the Myers-Briggs personality tests or the other popular one, or I think next most popular would be like the four colors personality test and just go down the list and figure out which traits that they assign to human psychology are the same traits that might align with someone who likes crunching numbers, like I mentioned earlier. And all of those are gonna be helpful to you in that role. The sector of finance known as wealth management or PWM, private wealth management in the industry, which really the general population would just know as financial advising, is what I work in and it's what I can speak more directly to here that is going to require more soft skills. Since you're talking with clients throughout the day, you're gonna to wanna to be someone who has a personality that can gel better with other people, but I don't mean in the mainstream ways of just being an outgoing person, so I'm gonna clarify on that. You do not necessarily need to be extroverted or outgoing, and I've seen many successful financial advisors or wealth managers who are shy people, and they do a good job of communicating to clients when they have to, but they're not necessarily the life of the party by any means. I think the two most important factors for someone in this role, one is gonna be a personality trait and one's gonna be more of a skill to learn. And that first one is that you're really a chameleon. And the second one, the skill that you need to learn is that you're a very good listener. People like people who are like them. So being a chameleon in this sense means that no matter who you're sitting across the table from, whether it's the 30 year old go-getter, excited about life, um, single guy who is a, in a hardcore sales job and 
uh, say they're a Republican and they love sports and they're really loud and laughable and outgoing, you want to be able to connect with that person in a conversation. Then 30 minutes later, you might be sitting across from the table with a 90 year old uh, elderly woman and her power of attorney is in the room with her and she is very conservative, speaks very quietly, is t maybe timid, you could say, invests all in bonds. Maybe this person is uh, into art and fashion and they're a Democrat and they're just everything that's the opposite of the prior client that I can kind of think of in, uh, in a characteristic of. You need to be able to gel with them as well. It would be extremely rare for there to be any financial advisor who works only with one demographic of people who may all necessarily share the same personality traits. That's just not going to happen. So you have to be able to, number one, communicate financial recommendations effectively to people of different personality types, but also be able to get along with them and have them like you in the meetings together. This probably requires some open-mindedness. And other than that, it can mostly be learned. I think just paying attention to the volume someone speaks at and their body language, if they're leaning forward, sitting back, arms crossed or arms open, whatever the differences are between those signals that someone can be conveying in a conversation, you're gonna wanna generally match all those things to truly be a chameleon so that they feel really comfortable sitting across the table from you. To be successful in this type of a role, you want uh, to have clients in the business and you want client satisfaction to be high and have referrals coming in and things like that. All these are gonna stem from positive relationships with the folks that you're working with. So if there's any one personality trait that can maximize those relationships, I think it's getting along with everyone, which requires being a chameleon. My second point there of being a good listener is mostly gonna stem from the fact that people like to hear themselves talk. It is also true that if you're a good listener, you're gonna pick up on a lot more information that this person is sharing with you and you're gonna remember more about them or you're gonna catch different financial nuances that you should be recording to maybe make recommendations from. But I think the more important factor is just that the person on the other side of the table from you is gonna walk away from that meeting feeling good and they're gonna feel like they accomplished something if they were the one who spent more time talking because people like to hear themselves talk. So to encourage this, you have to be a good listener and it can be difficult uh, either because you have points that you wanna be making, number one, so maybe you're wanna, you wanna do more communicating on your end or number two, maybe the other person doesn't wanna do much communicating and you have to kinda of encourage them to share more information with you. Both of those scenarios require some practice and effort. I'm nowhere near perfect at managing either of those circumstances and hopefully I'm getting a little bit better and better at both of those every week, every month, every year. But the better listener you are, the better you're gonna do at making that person feel like they're respected and like they had a good interaction with you since they got to spend a lot of time talking and the better you're gonna be at picking up on important information that you might actually need to record for your own records. You might notice that I'm totally ignoring all the standard like cover letter characteristics that someone might mention, you know, uh, perfectionist, attention to detail, very timely, all that. Those things are important, don't get me wrong, but I guess I'm thinking about this conversation that I'm having here as, as one that I'm having with folks who are already l relatively successful and they already do the easy things right. So they're honest, they have integrity, they show up to work on time or a little bit early. The types of things that you would kind of expect someone to start out with. And then from there is when I'm saying, here are the things that now you need to try to implement in your personal character to get a little bit better around the edges. I'm sure there are some other personality traits I'm missing out on here. So if you can think of any that you would consider extremely important to success in the finance industry that I didn't mention, of course, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below on this video, and I'll be happy to give you my thoughts back on that. So as always, thanks for watching.